Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, further into polar coordinates. Now look at example 9, which looks at the cardioid again, which is again, that's Greek for heart, and just the shape of a heart. And look at part 1, which we look at, uh, and this one I'm just going to go over dy over dx, or finding the slope, or the formula of the slope of a polar curve. And then in the next video I'll go over the rest of the example. So part A of this example states, for the cardioid R equals 1 plus sine theta of example 7, find the slope of the tangent line when theta equals 2 pi over 3. And then part B states, find the points of, on the cardioid where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. But in this video, it just takes a while, I'm just going to solve for the slope right here dy over dx, solve, solve for that formula, the general one, and then next videos I'll go over finding the specific um, values for these particular cases when theta equals pi over 3 or the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. So the first thing we'll do is recall from example 7, so make sure to watch my earlier video, I'll put that video uh, link in the description below. So recall uh, in example 7, let's write from recall example 7 right here and if you draw a, uh, a diagram of how it looks like so what we end up having is if this is the polar uh, axis right here we end up having a cardioid shape like this or a heart shape and this goes let's draw this uh, actually more symmetric like that so something like that and here I, I just fix that up so we have something like this and at this point is one this value is one distance from the origin and polar coordinates this is a two, this one is across, that's one as well. So that looks like an upside down heart. And now if you look at in polar coordinates, this point, let's say we have a point here, this is just distance, uh, this angle is just theta, this distance is r, this is just gonna be r theta, like that. And now if we wanna find out the slope, recall again, to find out the slope is, let's just impose this on a uh, Cartesian coordinate system, y and x. And let's say we wanna find out this point right here, the ordinate, this tangent to this point. So let's say we draw a line across like that. So that's dy over dx, that's just a slope there. So to do that, like I went over my last video on tangent lines, what we first do is, well, we just write this in parametric form or, uh, or write this polar equations into a parametric equations for x and y and then find the parametric uh, yeah, parametric slope or the or the slope using parametric equations. So this distance from here to here, that's, that could be y if this is a distance y, and this one here x, we'll say that's x. So we can convert that one based on trigonometry, so we know that uh, sine, so opposite of, opposite over, over hypotenuse is y over r, and then cosine is just going to be um, and the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we just use trig ratios here, we have x over r. So now we can just move the r's on the left side, this on the right side, exactly as in my last video. So what we'll have is, uh, so what, yeah, what we'll have is parametric equations y equals to r sine theta. And then what we also have here is x equals to r cosine theta. So we have these, now these are parametric equations where the parameter is this one right here. And now recall the formula uh, for um, the derivative of parametric equations. So dy over dx equals to uh, dy over the parameter d theta, and this is gonna be dx over d theta. Yeah, so then we could just throw this inside and then this one as well at the bottom. So what we end up having is, well, we take a derivative of those. So we could have, I'll just put those inside for completeness. So dr sine theta I mean, over d theta. So d over d theta, the derivative in terms of theta. And now we have r cosine theta. And then just using product rule. So we have, yeah, so now we could expand this. This becomes uh, dr d theta times it by, times it by, uh, that's just sine using product rule, plus now we have r, then the derivative of sine, which is uh, cosine theta, over the bottom dr over d theta of, of r, and then cosine theta, and then the derivative of cosine theta is negative, and then we put the r there, so negative sine theta is the derivative of cosine theta, just using product rule. So take the derivative of r times this, then derivative of this, 
times that and add those together. So now that we have this right here, yeah, so I'll just put this is dy over dx like that. So this is our formula. And again, I've already covered this in my last video. I just wanted to do that again because it's, it's better to uh, know how to do it as opposed to just memorizing. So now that we have this, we know that, well, r equals to the formula of the cardio cardioid above r equals to 1 plus sine theta right there. So this is 1 plus sine theta. So we could plug those inside. But first, let's solve for yeah. Let's solve for uh, uh, dr over d theta. So dr over d theta. This equals two. Well, the derivative of one is zero. Derivative of sine is cosine theta, like that. So that's what we have. Now we can just throw these all in there and just plug them all in. So what we end up having is a formula like this: dy over dx equals two dr over d theta. That's just cosine theta times it by sine theta plus now r here r is just going to be 1 plus sine theta and then we have the cosine theta like that divide this by dr over d theta that's just cosine theta and then we have the cosine right there so that's cosine times cosine that's just cosine squared theta subtract this by r sine theta again r is just 1 plus sine theta and now we have times it by sine theta like that yeah so we have this we could just leave it like that but uh, my calculus book just simplifies it much more so I'll just do that just because it's uh, <laughs> that's pretty fun to do and it's pretty interesting to uh, recap on how to do uh, uh, trigonomic algebra so it's pretty cool so let's look at the top part so just look at uh, no, just sim simplify. Yeah, what we have is this cosine theta. So cosine, if we just uh, expand that out, yeah, cosine sine theta plus. Now we multiply that in. That's cosine um, cosine theta plus sine cosine. Yeah, the sine theta cosine like that. That is this top part there. Yeah, simplified, then this equals 2. Uh, when we expand that, now we could just try to simplify this even further. We could take out the cosine. So factor out the cosine, theta out. What we end up having is now we have uh, cosines out. So now we have, yeah, we have now a sine plus 1. Remove that. And now we have another sine, like that. So then... Um, yeah, let's put this like that so that only just the top part. So this equals 2. Now what we have, yeah, this one, we just add these those up together. So this simplifies to cosine 1 plus 2 sine theta like that. Yeah, so we have simplified it to this like that. So we could just keep that for reference for now. And let's simplify the bottom one. It's a bit more complicated. So this part right there. So then the second part is cosine squared theta minus, now we can put an arrow like this. This goes all the way across there. Then then multiply that inside. It's going to be sine theta. And then multiply by this sine theta. That's going to be sine squared theta. But then there's a negative. So negative sine squared theta. And now what we can do is simplify this. I'm just going to put this arrow like this. This equals 2. Well, well, well actually, what all we could do is, uh, my calculus book does, is simplifies further by adding a sine squared theta and then subtracting a sine squared theta. So we're not changing anything. And that is because, put a, uh, like this, this is just separate. And the reason is so now we can use a trig identity cosine squared plus sine squared equals to 1. So let's put those together. This equals to cosine squared, move this over, plus sine squared theta. And now this one, yes, this one goes over. Let's move it over here. And now would we have this negative sine squared plus this negative sine squared. That is going to be a negative 2 sine. Yeah, negative 2 sine squared. But first, let's write this negative sine theta. And then this and this add up. That's negative 2 sine squared theta. Now this part right here equals to 1, and that is the uh, trig identity there. So make sure 
Uh, yeah, so make sure to watch my earlier video on that if you haven't already done so. And this is also called the Pythagorean identity. So now what we end up having is uh, this becomes now well, one. Yeah, one. Actually, I'll move this uh, to the other side first. I'm going to put this negative two sine squared first, just because it's easier to put in. And we're going to put this in uh, better form. And now we have this negative sine theta. And then there's our plus one. Just move the, move things around. Move this in the front. Move this in the middle. That just stays. Now we have a plus one there. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this negative two out. So negative two, factor it out so we can uh, basically factor the overall one easier because we have this uh, squared and we have the sine and there's nothing there as if we have an x squared, an x, and uh, just a number there. So this is going to be sine squared theta and then subtract this by, uh, this is going to be plus now we're because we're taking a negative 2 out. This is sine theta over 2 and now we have right here minus because we have 1 divided by negative 2 that's just going to be 1 minus, yeah, minus 1 over 2. Yeah, so we just factor out that. And now what we end up having is right here, we could just, well, recall, uh, just fact, basic factoring, if we have something like x plus a times x plus b. This, this is, again, just trying to simplify this further because my calculus book does, and it's pretty uh, interesting to do it. So when we expand this or FOIL it, we do x times x, that's x squared, and then x times b plus uh, bx, and then we have this part, a times x, ax, and then a times b plus ab. This equals 2 a, uh, x squared, and this one just we simplify this as a plus bx, and then plus ab. Those just add up because it's the same term x there. Um, this is plus. And yeah, now we'll, what we see is notice the similarities between this and this. So that's how we can factor. So this basically equals, uh, this is like uh, similar to, this is why I have this three equal signs, not exactly equal. This is just uh, putting it in that same format, but only look at this sine one, ignore the negative two. So we have sine squared theta, plus now we have one over two sine theta, and then plus right here, this is going to be actually subtract one over two. So if these are, uh, this is basically like looking at different variables of the same thing. So the x is going to, well, it's uh, resembling the sine squared theta. And now we have this a plus b. That's, um, yeah, that is just, well, equal to 1 over 2. And I'll just write this as equals to. So if, so all, all we're doing is replacing the x with sine theta. Then then that's the only thing different, just the, just the x right there. Then a plus b has to equal to 1 over 2. And now we have this. Uh, a times b equals to, write this uh, better, so just write a b equals to negative 1 over 2. Yeah, so if that's what we have, then what we end up having here is a plus b equals 1 over 2. Then, well, if you look at it, uh, if a equals to 1 and b equals to uh, 1 over 2, then what we have is that right there. I'll just put the numbers right here. So 1 minus 1 over 2 equals to 1 over 2. So we could just factor by guessing like that. And now if we multiply that out, we have this negative 2. So it's pretty easy to guess this one. And I'll put the video description, uh, I'll put the link in the description below for factoring by guessing. This is equals to 1 over 2. So what we end up having is A equals to 1, B equals to negative 1 over 2, like that. And I'll just circle these like that. So that means we could put it in this format where X is that. Yeah, so thus we have, yeah, so thus, I'll put this part right here. So thus, negative 2, and then we have the sine squared theta. Yeah, this was plus uh, 1 over 2 sine theta minus, this was 1 over 2. Let's just scroll, scroll back up. Here, yeah, so that's this part here. This equals 2, negative 2. And then the inside, we could factor it as x plus a, which is sine theta plus 1. And then we have sine, which is x plus b. So sine theta minus 1 over 2. So that's what we could simplify this further into. And then we could just multiply by this negative 2 inside, so we get 
uh, over there. I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to multiply this one inside this one so we could get rid of this uh, one, a negative 1 over 2. So what we have is, well, I'm going to move this one in front. So 1 plus sine theta and then multiply by this negative 2 inside. So we have negative 2 times negative 1 over 2. That's just going to be plus 1. And then plus right here, this is going to be 1 uh, minus 2 sine theta, like that. And that is our uh, denominator of the bottom. So that is the bottom part. So that's all in this uh, bottom part right here. Yeah, right here, that's the bottom part. Now we have the top one is this. So put this all together. Yeah, putting it all together, what we end up having is, so thus, the final formula dy over dx equals 2 in a more simplified version. Write this y better. dy over dx equals 2 cosine theta times uh, 1 plus 2 sine theta and then divided by um, divided by this part right there. So we have 1 plus uh, sine theta and then times it by 1 minus 2 sine theta like that. And yeah, that is our answer right there. And that's a sim more simplified version of the early one we had. So you guys wanted to go over that. Because my calculus book uses a simplified version, but we could just stick with this one. This is all good too. But uh, yeah, you just want to, if you want to simplify it, you could go do that <laughs> trigonomic algebra. Anyways, that's all for today. If you learned, like always, could download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.